Guess who's back and ready for torture? I'm gonna work so hard trying to edit this and watch me not even include any of the skits I actually try and include into the videos ever because of course I don't. But without further ado, what's up everybody? It's Margo and we are going to be doing the this or that tag today for this video. Question number one, series or standalone? Personally, I definitely would have to go with a series for this question because I love when books have a follow-up to themselves. For example, my own novel is going to be a duology, so clearly I have a thing for series. Standalones are great, but it feels often too short to me. There are certain books where I can understand and I feel content with the ending, but for a lot of them it feels like the story can still be told. And I, that's my biggest problem with standalones and it's the biggest reason why I often don't read them. So yeah, definitely a series for this one. <laughs> Question number two. Magic earned or magic born? Personally, I definitely have to go with Magic Earned because while Magic Born is great and it often provides the character a lot more experience and skill and, you know, a bunch of training montages with those powers, like in the Grishaverse, for example, it also kind of takes away that pride and achievement. Question number three. Enemies to lovers or friends to lovers? Personally, this is a very easy choice for me. Enemies to lovers all the way. Friends to lovers is fine, there's some little, like, you know, friend group drama, and, you know, you don't know if it's gonna work out or stuff, but I've never really seen the appeal, at least in books, for, for when it comes to friends to lovers, because it feels too easy. You know, you know, it feels too, too sweet. Question number four. Hilarious banter or emotional ruin? Personally, again, very easy. I greatly enjoy emotional ruin, typically because I am the type of person where... I don't come across as very emotional, at least in real life and in front of people, especially at school. No one really perceives me as a very feeling type person. I'm often kind of just seen as withdrawn and overly technical rather than caring. But actual friends would describe me as very warm and loving. So because I have a very hard time expressing how emotional I may be, because my emotions are very deep-seated and very beneath me. It's a lot harder to just openly feel things. So when a book can make me feel something, that truly determines how much I enjoyed the book. Five, love triangle or insta-love. Personally, I hate both of these, mainly because I am not a fan of love triangles purely because like I know people say oh they're unrealistic and that would never actually happen especially not to me um yeah well you know love triangles do happen they didn't just appear out of thin air from some author's dark horrible romantic mind you know they actually exist and as someone who has had friends who have been in love triangles I can just say from experience watching them it's so emotionally draining like, it, it gets so old after a while. I'd rather go with insta-love because then you at least know that you're going to end up with the person. Question number six. Keyboard smash names or names that all begin with the same letter. Personally, if I had to read a book where all of the names were the same letter, I would get annoyed very quickly. Very quickly. If I'm being given keyboard smash names, then at the very least they are all unique and different and I can easily distinguish one name from another. Keyboard smash nicknames are easier to swallow. Question number seven. Mean parents or dead parents? I still hate both of these tropes because it seems like you can never have a realistic set of parents in a young adult book ever? Like, I understand there needs to be an element of teen angst in every young adult novel and it pisses me off. What's with the angst? It's just such an annoying thing for me to read. Mean characters are even... are they less annoying to read and more like I'd rather just skim through these pages? And if you want to give your character some sort of home strife, do that, but you know... Do it in subtler ways, like say, instead of having the parents be completely evil and abusive, how about just helicopter parents? Or parents that 
seem to have no respect for your boundaries or privacy, those are much easier to identify with because those are actually a lot of common traits that today's teen parents have. I guess I'd rather read about dead parents personally because at least then they're not in the picture and I don't have to worry about them. I just need to skim over the few times you mention them over and over again because we constantly have to be reminded of the fact that your parents are dead. Question number eight. Supermodel looks or the plain Jane? Personally, I'd rather go with supermodel looks because at least then they recognize their appearance and the biggest problem I have with characters that are the plain Jane is that they constantly have to remind you how plain they are. I don't think that constant self-deprecating whininess that comes with plain Jane characters is really acceptable anymore because it just it, it gets stale and old and I'm tired of it. Question number nine. Face on covers or typography? Now, I do graph design, so the first thing I look at whenever I go to any book is the cover, and to be fair, I do judge a book by its cover, but for a good reason. If a lot of thought and effort has been put into the cover, that is almost a surefire way to tell that a lot of thought and effort has been put into the book. I personally like a combination of the two. And finally, question number 10. A villain turning a little good or a hero turning a little bad? This has never been easier for me. I, I definitely enjoy villains turning a little good a lot more just because it really provides some much needed dimension to villains because I feel like a lot of the villains that we read about now don't really have the dimension they deserve or I feel like a lot of villains are kind of just written off for being evil and really aren't given a chance for at a redemption arc at all. Like. Take Kaz Brecker, for example. I know I'm mentioning Six of Crows a lot. If we think about it, Kaz Brecker is probably one of the most well-written villains ever. I would never call him an anti-hero, purely because, as he says, he's not a hero. He's not trying to save anyone because it's the right thing to do. He does it because it benefits him. He always looks at a situation and looks at things to gain. He doesn't do anything just because. He doesn't show any acts of gentleness or kindness except for his group. And that's really where you can see the inner goodness he has tried so hard to smother. And that is what gives him the dimension he has as a character. And that is why so many people care about and love Kaz Brecker. I don't know whether to be concerned or fascinated by the fact that more often than not I align with villains than heroes. And that was the this or that book tag. Thank you for watching and make sure you leave a like on this video and comment down below if you have any thoughts to add. Without further ado, let us turn the page on this video and I will see you all in the next chapter. Ciao!